Uh, there's a dog. It's oh, a it's a dog. We were, we, we, all we could see was a tail. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a chocolate lab. He has his tail up all the time. <laughs> Um, well, let's see. I have, uh, my son and I spent three or four days now ripping up an oak floor in one of the bedrooms here because it was put down in the 1960s. Right. And it, un it covered up uh, the original floor from 1827. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do that for a long time. And I had to rent a dumpster for some stuff. So I thought, Now's the time. And, <laughs> it's not labor intensive. Oh my God. And um, <laughs> so the floor is wonderful. It has probably not seen the light of day in nearly 90 years because it had linoleum on top of that. Oh my goodness. Really old looking linoleum. Dark rose and so did they glue it right to the floor or did it? No, it just sat. Oh, there. awesome. Yeah. Oh, and so glue it. <laughs> yeah. I well, I, I had another floor. Uh, room in this house that had that issue yeah um so the some of the floorboards run the full length of the room and they're mm -hmm. upwards to 18 inches wide and so yeah i mean i i love it and but it's got some holes in it i think i sent you an email with some of those pictures oh, okay i didn't i didn't see it let me look so my question is what would you do with those holes they're not huge they're smaller uh, yeah they're they are tiny one the third one of them one is a little bigger than the other yeah the ones are not yeah and then the one looks like they were doing something with with wiring is that what you would think uh, if that one there could be yeah. wiring it could be a pipe coming up through yeah some kind I, yeah but like the ones that have smaller holes, what I would do is get some. And we, oh, okay. I was going to say, are we off or what? No, I, I just didn't hit the right button. <laughs> um, for ones with small holes? Yeah. Is what I do is I'll get some, uh, you can even use oak dowels. Mm -hmm. And what and we do is, is just use a little bit of like uh, yellow wood glue. Yeah. I've been using a lot of type on three right now, mm -hmm. just because it's, it, it, it dries more clear, but uh, mm -hmm. it also gives the better adhesive, especially if any water gets on it. Right. And then what you can do after you got the dowel, you know, glued in and it's set is I'll use like a flush cut saw. Okay. Which is one of the ones that, that kind of bends or whatever. Right. And I'll hold it down with my fingers and just kind of so, so, so it so solves it flush yeah. so you don't have to sand anything. Right. I'm, I'm assuming you'd get the grain going the same direction. Well, it would you, be you, it, if it you, would be end grain if you yeah, use a dowel. If you use a oh. dowel, it would be end grain. Yeah. But if you want if you want the grain to kind of match, you can make little. You can even get like pieces of wood and then just kind of cut or even whittle. Yeah. and do the same thing and, and pound them in okay. and then cut them off. Yeah. Okay. If, I mean, if you really want it to like go crazy and not have it look like a, like a patch, like, like, like a dowel wood or something like that, you could, um, you could get a, a salvaged um, wood board that would be like about the same time period. And then it would look like old wood too. Um, and I know you, we buy small amounts from Sylvan Brandt. And I've gotten hard pine from them. Yeah, this I was going to say those. Yeah, those this are floor is not hard pine though. It looks it's like it's oak. Yeah, it's it's oak. Uh, it uh, looks like white know. pine. Let me let me look. Let me look. Oh, sorry, I I was. You got to look through the dust. Not, it's not it's very not it's not very dense like yeah. hard pine is extremely dense yeah so it, it's more like a soft pine like yeah a, like a, a yeah. Pine. yeah yeah and since this yeah. is one of the back rooms of the house i guess that makes sense right yeah they they use the more more expensive down and then and less as you go up um and then what what was the other oh the bigger the bigger holes that you would do the same way the other the other thing we did we and we did it at the <laughs> peterson house was would be epoxy is that what you're going to say nope uh, what were you gonna say? i wouldn't use epoxy on a floor okay you did before though 
only because the government told us to. <laughs> I would never use a pox okay. uniform if the government didn't tell us to. That's like stupid. No matter what you do, you can't get it to look the same. Right. So, yeah. right. So basically, what I do for the bigger ones, like the like that third picture we saw where it's it's wider, is pretty much the same thing. It's you uh, you can square that up. And then just make a, a piece that fits in, maybe a slight angle on the sides so that you can glue and beat it in and then cut it flush again. Yeah. Uh, that's a Dutchman. So, okay. I mean, we've done that all over the place. We do that for doors, windows, flooring, trim. And I take, that, the I take it that's the best way if you've got size more sizable holes maybe three inches right. long or something like that because yeah. i've got a few of those in the dining room and that is hard to find yeah. yep but dutchman, i've got very hard time around so yeah. dutchman are, are, are if it's if it's pretty big that's usually what we end up doing or dutchman's because if especially if you don't want to take out the whole board and that's yeah. that's some labor there yeah. without wasteful. trying to break it and it, yeah it is wasteful yeah. So we'll end up just doing like little patches there. Right. I, my my uh, modus operandi around here is I try to keep all old materials that I can. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can't, if I can't absolutely repair, then replace. But that's last, I feel like that's last option. Right. Yep. I mean, I worked on a job where we were fixing windows and the park service guy there, you know, the bottom of the window was cut maybe from four inches down to two and a half. And he, he says, well, how do we fix this? One of my guys, and then they looked at it, the, the park service guys, because just cut it straight across. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, I said, why would you do that? Why won't you just cut an angle on the piece, glue it on the bottom and then cut what off you need so you keep as most of the original as you can. Right. And he's like, yeah, you're right. That's the best way of doing it. I was wrong. <laughs> and it's just like, come on, man, this is your job you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> So. Well, this house has had so many awful things done to it uh, that I figure that the, the more stuff, old stuff I can preserve, right. the better. And yeah. one of the interesting, you'll get a kick out of this in, in ripping up this floor. The guy who did it back in 1966, I guess it was, uh, mercilessly ripped out old woodwork and used it oh, to, to put underneath the oak floor. So oh, what now you have it. Now, <laughs> You know, anything I find that's old, of course, I preserve. There was a door casing with the uh, hinge cutouts. <laughs> and uh, I figured it was the door casing for the upstairs door out to the porch. Oh, yeah. Which doesn't exist anymore because they did away with the porch. In fact, I'd be sitting on the porch right now. <laughs> it's, now it's now a room. So I couldn't, I didn't have the money to put all that brick back. Oh, yeah. So that was just one of those unfortunate things but it's interesting what you find it that, is it yeah. is and we um we were doing a um a project for one of our friends that that the house was a very large house at one time and probably 80 years ago was converted the first floor was converted into office space for a doctor and that's what she uses it for and we were we were doing something little last winter for her and we pulled we we took out a, the bathtub that was in it was and behind it was the whole staircase so you could see like how it went the whole way up to the third floor oh, they had, the, trim and, the everything. trim and everything they had kept there behind the bathtub we were i was so excited <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah a lot of times you find clues too about what oh, was yeah. yeah sometimes i get nervous if like they like they had demoed and just threw all their trash in the in the um like little what would be like the little cubby hole under the stairs and I, I was like, oh, I'm a little nervous digging yeah, all this trash out. What else did they throw in well, here? <laughs> a lot of times they would either throw it out the back door into yeah. a burn pile yeah. or into a, onto the basement, they would throw their trash and everything. I mean, I've been on jobs where we were digging out basements and I found an old baby bottle that was glass with, yeah. with, a, with the etched like raised baby head yeah. and numbers on it. And I'm like, here, you want this? It's your house. And they're like, nope, throw it out. I'm like, you crazy. I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I even found one of those old clay pipes behind the door frame that we were repairing. The guy just didn't want that either. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. I'd be taking everything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Home, homeowner should have first dibs. And then if you're going to throw it out, I'll, I'll think if I'll take it or not. 
Well, all the old woodwork around here that was mercilessly cut and used for various things that couldn't be used again, I kept it. It's in the uh, attic. Yeah. Well, so then you have the profiles at least. You right, and I ended up making exact duplicates of a lot of that, mm -hmm. uh, which was not cheap. That was um, Lidditz planing mill. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they had to make everything, you know, their profile to make all custom. Yeah. And uh, so I was lucky that I found enough that they could do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, okay, so one last question then. I What would you put on the floor? Because it it's just bare wood, and I are guess you that, gonna, that, are you going to use? Are, is it going to have heavy traffic? No, it's not like a hallway, but it, yeah. it's 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 it is my son's room, okay. and he's a teenager, and yeah. but he he likes this house. He's respectful of it. But it, it, it is the, he's a teenager. It, it is the pathway between the front part of the house and the laundry room, which is upstairs. So I okay. guess it will get moderately heavy traffic. Right. Well, what we do, and it's I guess it just depends on how, how you want to handle it. We'll often just clean a floor like that with um, TSP, uh, tri-sodium phosphate, and water, and just a shot back. You just make a slurry and then vacuum up the wetness until until it's clear and that's how we clean it so you don't take the patina away but you clean it and then we'll often use brie wax um but that's kind of that's why i was asking you because that's kind of a maintenance issue then because you have to wax it then every couple of years yeah um the other thing that i've seen people do lately is um, like a tongue oil mixture you could use the tongue oil mixture that we make and then that would give you that would give you a hard finish I think I think that's what I would recommend for for a room that has more traffic. So mm. it's um it's it's real tongue oil, pure tongue oil, far varnish. far varnish, which because of VOCs, I think you have to get from a a marine uh, supply mm -hmm. place now, and turpentine, and it's a third, a third, a third, and you just brush it on, and it's not shiny, but the spar varnish will give it some protection, give the floor some protection. It would be a little slick till it hardens pretty good. Yeah. But it, it will it will it will give the floor some protection without making it glossy, you know, super won't look like a gym floor. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't have any color to it. No, it doesn't it, have any. A little it, bit. It, it's like a goldish, a little gold. The, the tongue oil will like just pop the, the Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that uh, the other the other thing that we do sometimes if if you know if somebody's really like if it's a really high traffic area we will do a satin poly, um, and you know even a stain with that. Um, um, but I I think that I think the more traditional would be the tongue oil with the with the spar varnish and the turpentine. Okay. Yeah. Do they what what are the if you're going to stain a floor? This is something I've been wondering about for a long time anyway. If you're going to stain a floor, do they? Is there a place that makes like really old style stain? Um, I yeah. would say, if you're going to go for a, a real stain, the real milk paints, mm -hmm. they their their paint is actually multi-use because it comes in powder form, and it comes in all different colors and yeah. and shades and everything else. And it, it could be any from any it could be anywhere from a stain to a paint yeah, on can, how much you, you can, mix you can it. Water water. it down. We we and we've done that on a project. We've taken a brown, watered, watered it down, brushed it on, wiped it off to just get the color and then wax on top of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I so, have that site. I have that site bookmarked. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they do have, I, I'm not as familiar with some of their other things, but I think they do have some like oil mixtures and, and different things. We did, I did a podcast um, with, with um, him last year or the beginning of this year. Yeah, they're real knowledgeable. On yeah, they, yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. Am I correct in, in assuming that in 1827, <clears throat> forests weren't stained? They were left bare, weren't they? Usually. usually usually they were bare yeah. uh, the Victor uh, unless they wanted unless they you unless they painted them yeah i was gonna say the victorians and started put, painting floors and or, and also they would put yeah. like area rugs yeah yeah like yeah. i was i was in a pretty i was in a pretty early house this afternoon Actually, um and it was uh, oh the canvas can they would do canvas yeah they would do canvas a yeah, lot painted so. canvas for for floor coverings 
but I was in a pretty early house um, today and their floors were not finished, but, and the, the house hadn't really been touched, but the hallway, the center hallway had what we would call inlay now, but it was, it was like an early inlay. And so that was, then that, that floor did have a little bit of a shine to it, but the rest of it they were was, trying to protect yeah, it the, the rest of it, the rest of the floor was unfinished and they just had area rugs all around. See, and in my house, like I said, the front section, well, actually, the front section is two rooms down and two rooms up, and mm -hmm. a hallway up, down, and a hallway up. All the floors are hard pine, except for the upstairs second bedroom, which is also this white pine. Right. I never understand, I don't understand, maybe they just ran out of hard pine, why they didn't put hard pine in that room mm. they might have they might have run out they might have been just trying to save a little bit of money yeah because they yeah. would they would definitely in a lot of the houses first floors would always be the upgraded versions of everything right especially in like their parlors or entertainment rooms or whatever yeah, where you that would the public rooms. Yeah, yeah would be like where they would spend most of their money and then as you get up it got less and less so it could have also just been uh it's in the back out the way hardly anybody's going to use it so yeah I, this house was apparently built for a single lady who mm -hmm. lived here for 34 years and she had some money um there's chair rail in a lot of rooms um you know it's not like lavish but it's not real plain either right and that that's I, that's pretty fancy for for the 1830s to have chair rail and things especially like in a farmhouse yeah yeah, yeah. So, and it's, it's nice. The rooms are a little small and the, the ceilings are eight foot at most. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, I consider it mid range, but I always thought it was funny. They didn't put hard pine in that one room, but I could see <laughs> the back section. The only difference downstairs in the front room was the chair rail and the uh, door casings were more fancy and they had right. the, the yeah. square piece up at the corner. Mm -hmm. I forget the rosette, you. yeah. Yeah, the rosette. That's the only room in the house that had that was that front yeah. front room. Yeah, that's pretty typical. And then definitely as you go upstairs, there's sometimes there's one room on the first floor that's really fancy, but then as you go upstairs, you know, they definitely get less formal. Well, what's interesting is that I can I can show you this, you know, this is the I don't know if you can see it. It's it's kind of far away. Very plain. Oh, it is very case. plain, yeah. Uh, that was copied from an original door casing mm -hmm. in that room, um, where the top piece is, does not come out over the side piece. It's only in between the side pieces, which I understand is, is original. That was more typical, pre-Victorian. Yeah. But the piece yeah. that I uncovered, it has a bead on it and had a bare, bare piece where apparently a fancy molding was on it. And it well, was and there, there, are, there are some colonial molding that would be, and you're kind of like on that that in between stage but where they just have a, a bigger bead on the on the edge like you did at carlton like that colonial yeah it'd be have a bead going up yeah. in like in between where in like say where the doors would be going up air and across yeah. the top yeah and then right. some sometimes on the other edge they'd have another molding that would be applied to yeah, it like an add and that would be a fancy and that's how a lot of times it would be They got smarter as they got a little older, even though, even though it's still old. Because you got to remember, they've done all that stuff by hand blade. <laughs> we use routers and shapers nowadays. So, but yeah. even still, I use that stuff once in a while, especially when I got to make like a small, you know, two foot, three foot section for something. Right. And it's faster to grind and make your own plane for that than it is to go buy $300 router bit or something right but they would have they literally had like a box of like 12 they, they were like little box planes and basically with the with, the, with them they'd have like anywhere between 12 to 24 and up different moldings yeah and with that box they could pretty much make any molding they wanted okay and let me get this piece. I'm going to show you this piece before, because they, before they standardized it. The routers, mm -hmm. or no, the like with the, the Victorians, things. that's how they got fancier. Yeah, because they were able to use yeah, the router. Like this is the piece that I uncovered, and 
you know, yeah, that's, it, that's yep. what I, yeah, and it does that that had the piece mm -hmm. applied to it where it's not painted. It, that, yeah, um, and and th but I think this was in the back room upstairs, which I wouldn't have expected to be this fancy. No, but that's that's pretty that yeah, that's pretty early though. Uh, we the house that I was saying to Jonathan that I that I was mentioning that I thought it matched that was 1725. Yeah, that's uh, that's it, about yeah. that time frame. Yeah, so but this is a hundred years later. Yeah, so, but that's yeah. still yeah, that's still an old old style. Yeah, because really they flatten it and they had to run that by hand with a bead maker, mm -hmm. and, and then, then they, they would make then they would make the another piece. thin yeah. piece with a with it and then applied on, on to where that brown spot is right there. Where yeah. your hand is there'll right. be another molding on top of that yeah that's what i have in the front section and I'm, uh, i had to make i had to duplicate a lot of that at lit it's planning though because most of it was was ripped off right um when they put the eight inch paneling in oh uh, goodness <laughs> but, oh god yeah all that got put in the dumpster but um <laughs> this looks like it was through it was looks like it got hit by a machine gun fire Oh yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody put uh, some nails in that. <laughs> well, a lot of guys nowadays think if one nail holds a hundred, we'll hold it better. Right. Yeah. Oh, you should have seen the nails I ripped out of this place. Unbelievable. It's like you had stock and nail coming in. But oh. that is fixable. Yes. Yes. It is. It's fixable. Yes, I I agree. And all uh, you need to do is use some PC Woody. Yeah, that's what we use for my small costume. And then you can sand it out and then repaint it and P look brand P new. PC Woody. Yeah, they that's actually they actually manufacture in Allentown. Um, we call it peanut butter because once that, it's mixed, it looks like a peanut butter cream. Okay, so it's like Bondo in that way. Except for it's got wood fibers in it, so it expands and contracts with the wood. And I will tell you this. Don't put anything against it till until it's dry because it's it like is glue. epoxy, <laughs> it will glue. We yeah. did it the first time and figured, oh, we'll clamp the door down to the table and come back to it tomorrow. We glued it to the table. <laughs> it took <laughs> me and my father-in-law like 25 minutes just to get it loose. Oh my gosh, yeah. So okay. it is it and yeah. I'm where the bondo we have had cracks and fallen yeah, out here. Yeah. From, from it. Yeah. Where this stuff is that because that's designed for metal, this is designed for wood, and this is okay. like some of the best wood fill I've ever used so far. Wow! I use. Yeah, you can you can order from them directly. The um, company name is um, PC Products. PC Products, and they have they have a website, but they you can buy small cans like at hardware stores, and I think even like big box stores have them. But for twice as much. Yeah, but if you you can buy from them directly, and they're they're relatively local. They they manufacture okay. in Allentown. I mean, if we're in a pinch, if John's is like we're out of it, I'll run up to Allentown and pick it up so that they. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah, but it's it, it's a like a brown paste and a white paste. You just mix about equal parts together, mm -hmm. and it'll become like a like a peanut butter, light creamy brown, and you just fill it and then sand it. You know, it might take twelve to twenty four hours to dry. But sure. then you just sand it and then and that is that stainable or just it's, it's just for paint they have they have colors that you can add to it um like the are they powder i don't know about abitron no no i, I know abitron does but i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that pc products oh, I'm sorry, have, PC Woody. yeah i'm pretty sure that they do have colors that you can you can mix in while you're mixing we um we don't do that often with the with the uh, PC products. If we do, we sometimes will use Abitron, which is another wood epoxy. If okay. we're doing if we're doing log restoration, and they have ones that they can mix into. But that that epoxy is better for like big voids, where this is much easier to stand. It's nicer for like small I'm stuff. I'm like considering using yeah. this somewhere, but I have to get the other two pieces made. But um, you know, can you run a router? I don't, but I have an organ builder friend who does a great deal of stuff for me. Yeah, because I was going to say a lot of that stuff is so e the older stuff is easy to make. Mm -hmm. Like, like I can tell you now because I make I do I make sash and stuff from scratch, especially when I got to make parts and stuff to fix yeah. them. Right. A lot of times, it's labor intensive. Is what where it comes for fixing stuff like that. But if it's making new, replicating it to old. The hardest part is pretty much getting a router bit made. 
Because if yeah. you get custom router bits, they're like 300 bucks a piece. Right. But if you got something that, you know, like a round over like that yeah. with a yeah. with a bead, you could get it, you can get it any hardware store usually or on or even online yeah. from a from a there's like, companies that just specialize in router bits. But yeah, and then if you if you have a router cable, you can set it up and then just run it and it would be it's fairly easy. I mean, I've never done it, so I'm just saying it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I have a 21 year old autistic kid. I get doing it. I'm not so, saying he's stupid, but somebody doesn't pay attention. So there might be a router bit for sale for this. Kind oh, of yeah, definitely. There yep. okay. yeah, I you, guarantee it. You just have to measure the radius to know what size you need. But yeah, definitely. You can. From, from here to here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what I do is there's a there's a flat void in between that bead. Yeah. Like if you look at the round over, there's a flat piece in there. It's kind of like a little valley. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what it's what it is. It's it's probably about a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, and then it starts the round over. So you right. just got to find a router that a router bit that does that mm -hmm. that has that profile. You can. Yeah. That'd be the. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's funny because when I was first doing work in the house. I did also the demo work downstairs to get rid of all that junk. And the guy who did all this in the 60s had nailed a piece like this to the wall in the hall and put paneling on it. And oh, I yeah. ripped it off and I saw it's old. I thought, oh, it, it had this. And it had the, the um, cutouts for the hinges and everything. And it had the paint on it that showed that it was in the dining room. Yeah. It showed where it was. It showed it was the door from the dining room to the hall because on the other side it had little tiny bits of blue paint from the hall. <laughs> so I put it back. Yeah, it, yeah, it's back where it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you found that too. Like when you were um at Carlton's you you found that the the paneling that you used up in the a closet, didn't you? Yeah, because yeah. me and my that's another one that's funny. We were down in New Jersey working on the one of the oldest houses in Salem County. And I'm looking at this going, the pattern on the floor is giving this weird shape, like it's like it's a, a thicker panel board, then a skinnier board, then a thicker board, then a skinnier board that kind of like interlocks, but not really like, like, like it just sits in there like a raised panel would. Yeah. And would be nailed to a to a board. And me and my father-in-law are going rounds about this. And I'm up, so I'm upstairs working in the attic and I find a section of the wall. <laughs> and I took it downstairs and sat it there and I found the exact spot. And I said, see, I told you. <laughs> he likes to be <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a puzzle sometimes. It is, it is. It, and, the, and it will reveal itself. You just have to give it a little bit of time. <laughs> yep. yeah, every time I demo something in this house, I'm always hopeful that I'll find some piece of information that- Yeah a more complete picture and yeah, this yeah. is great I, you know yeah, yeah. so uh i know i have one other question for you guys okay. it's sort of a general question i find there's no complete or not complete but a no um book a large book of old houses in adams county york county anywhere hmm. uh, it seems like there's all these wonderful old houses and i can find no information about any of them I wonder if it's because people around these parts just don't like people coming in their houses. I don't oh, know. I don't know. Um, there's there's actually lots of places like that. Yeah, but I, I'm just thinking about, I, yeah, I, I'm thinking about Adam's house. I know that Jim, do you, are you familiar with Jim Fritz? You know who no. he is? Um, he's a former client. He's, he's a character. But he's, he, I know he was working on an Adams County book. I don't know if it was specific to, I don't know if it was specific to, um, um, I don't know if it was specific to arch, like specific house architecture. I will, I will reach out to him and ask him. I know he was doing that for the Adams County Historical Society. Oh, um, okay. yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think, yeah, there are, there's a lot of, I'm just thinking about the, the, um, the books that I have, I and I don't think they went that far west. The majority of them, no, so, and a uh, lot of them are just pop, the popular, yeah, famous places. Yeah, not a lot of right. Them. And and what I would really get a lot of information out of is playing going into places like that have houses like this that are right. More have you ever have you ever looked on the Habs, um, the 
historical oh, yeah. archives. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was yeah. gonna say that they um they have like molding profiles and things like that. I didn't Profile. know if it. I didn't. I know Lancaster County only has like sixty properties on it. I didn't know what what Adams. Adams County, County almost is completely limited to County. Is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think of. I know in Maryland, uh, almost yeah. every county in Maryland, they put out a fairly, fairly thick book mm -hmm. of old houses, and it, it wouldn't be very detailed about each place, but it would be something. Right. And there's nothing around here like that. And the only old house that I was able to gain access to was a public house. It was blown by Gettysburg Battlefield. It was. One of the, I can't remember the name of the place now, but it, you had to pay ten dollars to go in, and me and my son. <laughs> And it was a house made of stone instead of brick, but it had the exact same dimensions as this house does. Right. And it was from a similar time period. I actually learned some stuff from going in there. Yeah. Well, and I will. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out to to Jim and and see because I know I think his book was coming out relatively soon. So I'll see what he has and 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 let you know what let you know what um, what I find out about that. There's a wonderful old house about a, a half a mile from here that was built, that looks to me from looking on the outside that it was built around the same time period as this house. Uh -huh. Very similar in appearance. And I drove up there and the the guy was out there with his rifle and he was fixing it and trying to shoot something. He never came oh, down, <laughs> never said a word to me at all. His wife um, said, well, you'd have to talk to my husband's father. I don't think he'll let you see it though. And so I drove down the road, talked to him, and said, no, no, I'm sorry. I don't let anybody see you now. So, oh, goodness like, gracious. <laughs> yeah. People that are was, so weird. <laughs> I know. So anyway, well, thank you so much for all this You're information. You're welcome. Yeah. I, will, I, I, will, I will follow up on that for you, and I will, I will let you know. OK. okay all right. Very good. Thanks thank again. you. Yep. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. You too, bye.